Hello, my name is Piers Lee Pollitt. I'm head of the Privacy Data Team at Doyle Clayton, and I'm going to talk to you for the next 10 minutes or so about the General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR for short. So what are we going to cover? Rather than talk about the differences between the current data protection legislation and the GDPR, I'm going to jump right in with a typical scenario and come up with a 10-point plan to help you on your way to GDPR compliance. So imagine this scenario. You're the HR director of a medium-sized company in the financial services sector, turning over £8 million a year and employing about 50 people. You've looked at the people around you to see if there's anyone else who's better placed than you to take responsibility for implementing the GDPR within your organisation. There isn't. So it's down to you. Where on earth do you start? Hopefully my 10-point plan will help, starting with task one. Educate yourself and get the resources you need. Start by reading up on the GDPR. There are plenty of resources out there and training sessions available. But the clock is ticking down to May 2018 when the GDPR comes into force, so don't hang about. You'll need buy-in from senior management. You may need to develop new systems and processes, and these take time and cost money. And how do you get senior management buy-in? First, you get their attention, warning them of the risk of huge fines and the harm to the company's reputation if you ignore the GDPR or get it badly wrong. But don't forget to promote the positives too. Clients, employees and other stakeholders expect compliance and will invest in you with confidence if they know you're taking their data security seriously. There are too many reports of ID theft or of complacency in big businesses about data security. Your clients, employees and other stakeholders want to know you're up to the challenge that has been set by the GDPR. Task 2. Find out if your organisation has to appoint a Data Protection Officer or DPO. You have to appoint a DPO if you're a public authority or public body, or if your core activities require regular and systematic monitoring of data subjects on a large scale, or where your core activities require large-scale processing of sensitive data or data relating to criminal convictions and offences. In our scenario, I think that given the size and nature of the business, it's very unlikely that you'll be required to have a mandatory DPO, but you need to document your answer. Bear in mind that there are fines if you fail to appoint a DPO when required to do so. Task 3. Decide whether you should be the DPO or whether you need to appoint someone else. Even if there's no mandatory requirement for a DPO, it's advisable to have a voluntary DPO as a point of contact for staff and clients, as well as for the regulator, the Information Commissioner's Office, commonly known as the ICO. If you're required to have a DPO but don't have time to bone up on the GDPR sufficiently well for the needs of your business, or you don't have the inclination to do so, then you'll need to recruit a DPO. You'll be up against stiff competition for good quality DPOs with the necessary skills and experience. They'll be a little like EU trade negotiators, i.e. expensive and scarce, so start recruiting now and get ahead of the game. Or, if that person is you, get yourself trained up and ready as soon as you can. Task 4. Creating a data compliance program. Okay, let's assume that you're the new DPO. You need to begin by reviewing your current data protection compliance program, or create one if there isn't one already. There's no one-size-fits-all, but as I see it, there are six key stages. Firstly, you start by assessing data processing activities, known as data mapping. Secondly, you need to create or review data protection policies. Thirdly, you should organise data protection training and raise awareness amongst the staff. And your next three steps are to implement controls to reduce and monitor risk, monitor compliance and report back to the board at regular intervals. Task 5. Data Mapping. So what is data mapping? It's working out what personal data you hold within your organisation, knowing where it can be found and what you do with it. Find out whether, and if so, what personal data is outsourced to data processors, such as payroll providers and outsourced marketing or IT functions. Don't underestimate the amount of time you'll need to carry out a data mapping exercise, particularly if your organisation is a large one and if you hold personal data for a large variety of different purposes. Often this stage alone can take many months. Senior management buy-in is essential if you're going to get this task done in good time so that you can address the other tasks before May of next year. Task 6. Create data protection policies. 
As accountability is key with a GDPR, you'll need to take technical and organisational measures to ensure and be able to demonstrate that your processing activities are GDPR compliant. Don't rely on off-the-shelf policies. Your policies must reflect your actual processing activities, which is why you start on these after you've done the data mapping exercise. You'll need a number of different policies and procedures. Firstly, to deal with data breach management and notification, as there will be increased obligations to notify the ICO of any breaches, as well as, in some cases, the data subject whose personal data has been compromised, you'll need a new policy and procedure for dealing with breach management and notification. Secondly, you'll need to create or augment your current information security policy. Thirdly, you'll need a policy to cover data subject rights, especially regarding data subject access requests. Fourthly, you'll need to draft privacy policies which will tell people what you intend to do with their data and to whom that data is likely to be disclosed. Transparency is a key concept within the GDPR. The next step is to implement those policies and procedures and to review them periodically to ensure they remain fit for purpose. Task 7. Creating data protection training and raising awareness. There should be mandatory data protection training on induction and annual refreshers given to everyone involved in processing data, from the CEO down to receptionists and contractors too. Often I find that junior staff offer the most valuable insight into day-to-day -day activities, good and bad practices, so as a DPO it's important to have a mechanism for listening to them and for them to speak openly about what they do. You should arrange more regular bespoke training where you've identified that the individual is involved in high-risk processing. You should also ensure that if anyone is responsible for a data security breach, they're given additional training so that they learn from their mistakes and you can show that you've acted responsibly to reduce the risk of the same mistake being repeated. And as with all training, it's important to keep records of who's attended for auditing purposes. Task 8. Implementing controls to reduce and monitor risks. You have an obligation to ensure that you apply appropriate security measures when you're processing personal data. You'll need to sit down with IT and heads of departments and agree minimum security requirements that should be written down and communicated. You'll also need to monitor third-party compliance, like outsourced payroll or marketing functions. Task 9. Monitoring compliance. There are no set timescales for compliance monitoring, as it depends on the controls you have in place. For example, it's recommended that you have annual data protection and refresher training, and that you remove access controls when people leave, but that you also review them periodically. As people change jobs and move around the business, it may not be appropriate for them always to maintain the same level of access to personal data. You should also be monitoring examples of non-compliance, like customer complaints, as and when they occur. I also think it's a good idea for DPOs to do their own targeted testing and conduct audits in areas where they have concerns that internal procedures aren't being followed. Your classic example is a clear desk policy, which in my experience is very often more honoured in the breach than the observance. And finally, task 10, reporting. As a minimum, you should prepare an annual report summarising activities and compliance issues. This should cover potential breaches and complaints and other risk areas, and should look forwards as well as backwards. In larger organisations, it's recommended that you put in place a monthly reporting system, which will be based on information gathered as part of the compliance programme. I hope you found this podcast interesting and useful. There's obviously a lot more to the GDPR than I've been able to cover in a short session, so for further information, or if you'd like to receive bespoke training for your organisation, please contact me, Piers Lee Pollitt. My details are on the Dahl Clayton website. Thank you for listening. Thank you.